How does stress affect you? Do you know what stress actually is? Well, you're going to turn around and say, yes, I do, because I feel it. I feel stressed. I feel really emotional. I feel overwhelmed. I feel out of control in the situation. Stress is stress. But the bigger thing is the meaning that we give to that stress is how we will react to the stress. I remember when I was growing up, the biggest thing for me was being able to speak out for myself without that crack in my voice, without that shaking, without that fear that if I spoke what I was feeling, I wouldn't get loved. Maybe that's where you find yourself. Maybe there's something deep inside you that you want to voice, but the way that you want to put it together, the other person would not like. And it might hurt. It might mean that you get left. It might mean that that person would never want anything to do with you again. So experiencing the loss isn't worth speaking the truth. But eventually, as you go on your journey in life, you're going to find this pattern will repeat itself. And being able to break this pattern is something that would free you in life. So when you are in a situation and you so want to talk to somebody, you so want to break out of this feeling of being not you, but conforming, fitting in, being as other people see you. And how other people see you does not always match how you really are. In fact, if you sat down with the five people that are closest to you and asked them, how do you see me as a person? You would probably get a few similarities, but you'd also get a few wake-ups. <laughs> and it's amazing how other people see us and we don't see ourselves. When we think, perhaps we're not strong or courageous, Another person may say, oh wow, you really handled that amazingly. I wouldn't have been able to do it that way. Do you know your own strengths and abilities? Maybe you don't. But maybe from experiences and circumstances that you've had in life, you're not realizing your own strengths and abilities. And it is when you talk to another person and you ask them, how do you see me? Tell me what you think my strengths are. Tell me what you think I am perhaps not living up to fully. And just be open and receptive to what comes back. You don't have to judge what they feel because it's their perspective. And don't forget their perspective is how they see you, how they receive you, how they accept you. And if they're really true friends to you, they're going to tell you the truth. And sometimes we need to have this. Because if we're getting stressed in life, normally we're just stacking things on top, like boxes. One thing happens, another thing happens, so that gets added, that gets added, until this tank is full and then it's overflowing. And we either have a breakdown, we either are in a doctor's surgery, getting a medication prescription pushed across the table, a visit to the pharmacy, we drop these pills, and off we go to another world of oblivion, numbness, non-receptive. It doesn't have to be this way. Perhaps you can reach out and talk to somebody 
who's got that non-judgmental, non-objective approach, so that you can voice how you're feeling. And if that person is really good and maybe qualified in their field, they will be able to get you to understand how you operate. And when you realize how you operate, you are operating from an inherited pattern. Maybe somebody around you was really, really stressed when you were growing up. Maybe you saw it happen. So maybe you only got glimpses of that real person because the other side of them was constantly fear-based. And as you grow up, and you are around that environment, you're going to become a sponge to that as well. So if you want to break through this, there has to be something that is like a light bulb moment, a whole shift in your perspective. And that could actually mean attending to more self-care for you. I've been helping people that have been going through relationship breakdown. And when this happens, there is a yearning, there is a longing, there is a wanting to give your perspective, there is a need for that other person to understand how you're feeling. And maybe it was a mistake you made, maybe it was something you said, maybe it was something that you did. Maybe it was something that you didn't do, but that person still left. This is going to bring up so much of feeling sad, lonely, rejected, not good enough, not coming up to that person's objective of what they thought you should be, not meeting a standard of what they thought you should be. So therefore, you, you're no longer sure anymore of who you are. And the pain of a breakdown and the pain of a relationship is stressful. But what meaning are you giving to this stress? Now stress from when you lose somebody is another totally different stress. Not only have you got the mourning of the person, but you've got things going on around you that need attention and maybe you're alone with it. Maybe you have to deal with it all yourself. I know because I've been there. I lost my partner very suddenly at 49 and I was left with just this huge black hole inside of me. And I remember lying around for sort of like days in a, in a, a fog where I was wondering what life was going to be but I was yearning for the life that had been for that person to walk back into my life, to hear his voice. And then I realized that that would never happen again and that, just that one thought that my life would never be the same again. Now you may be listening to this and you may be saying, yeah, I get you, I understand. And that's how you feel at that moment in time and that's not wrong. Isolation, hurt, a yearning for things that can never be yours again, that you will never experience again, strips you to the core. But it is a process. And through this process, you come to understand yourself more. You come to understand how your character changes, how life experiences change you. And grief is stress. End of relationship is stress. Moving house is stress. Having a child is stress. Looking after elderly relatives, friends, yes, it's stress. We're all these things are part of life. Some of these things we will experience and each of that experience brings 
a different perspective to you. But if anything, the stress is all related to the emotions that come up and the meaning we give to the emotion. You may have something happen to you in life which was a long, long time ago and something may happen to you in life when you're a lot older. But that happening will trigger something inside of you. And so therefore, whatever is happening to you now and whatever was happening to you then, you will put them together and you will give them roughly the same meaning. But you've got to look at it and say, actually, yeah, the feelings are the same, but what's just happened is not the same. Maybe it's another relationship that's broken. It's an experience of, of another death. Whatever that is for you, you have to look at what is really happening now. You've got to stop stacking old memories on top of this to make it a hundred times worse for yourself. See things as they are, not as how you think they are. See things that's what's happened over a, a certain amount of time or maybe something that you've just found out. But there has been a process to this and maybe we haven't seen the process happen, like a sudden illness, a sudden death. Don't blame yourself for these things. There's something out of our control. But the only thing that is in your control is the emotional attachment you're giving to the stress that you're experiencing. Acceptance is such a huge thing to be able to do. But when you accept people for who they are, and you accept yourself for who you are mostly, life can be so less complex for you. Having conversations with other people over my years of coaching, you do recognize patterns in people and you do recognize that we are all energy creatures in this world. And if you understand anything about energy, you will also understand how people give out energy. Some people give out so much enthusiasm and love and gratitude for their lives that you can't wait to be with this person again because there is a certain excitement, there is a certain element of fun around this person. And that person may have been through so much in life, but their perspective is to develop coping strategies. Things that not only serve them, but serve their highest good. And for the love and concern for all around them. And there may be other people in your life that stay in a lower vibration of guilt, of shame, of not being good enough, not being accepted anywhere. And these people will be hard work for you. You will feel that you always want to reassure them. They always need your care, the needy people. When you realize that what they've been through and their perspective of their life has meant that they are playing a victim almost. And that's how they meet their needs. That's how they get their love and connection with people. That's how they get significance and recognition in life. Life isn't just how you see it. Life is a lot more about how you feel it. And let your feelings be your guide. If there is something that's really hurting you and there's something inside that's not right, voice it to somebody in a safe environment. 
because when you do this, you will release that inside of you, which is going round and round and round. And going to friends and family sometimes isn't the best thing you can do because they're going to be concerned. They may come from a different perspective and trying to fix you and put you right. But that again will be about their perspective. And that's not being any detrimental feelings towards them. That is just how they see life. The greater understanding is that you can have breakthroughs and they don't have to be massive. They can just be like having a conversation like you and I can sit at a table and have this conversation and you can voice how you're feeling, voice your past, voice your experiences and then we can suddenly see how these patterns keep repeating. What you've carried with you inside from a child, what you were given up until the age of six and then your bigger perspective and your conscious mind kicks in, then you start to being curious you start to develop yourself. And in some ways, if that doesn't fit to another person's agenda, <laughs> they will let you know. By being yourself means you can free yourself. Do not let stress overwhelm and take you over. Realize what motion is behind that emotion. Treat yourself kindly. Be ever curious to the feelings. And find about more about you. Who you are. How you feel. And recognize your qualities. Recognize your uniqueness inside. I would like to give you just something to think about. You were not brought here just to be this one thing. You were brought here to be all things. All things wonderful, magical, meaningful. You have a higher purpose that you must tap into. You are not just your job title. You are not just a mum, a son, a daughter, a grandmother, a brother, a sister, a cousin. You are not just your title. You are a whole energy being, built of source, energy, love. Tapping to that magic that you've got inside and ignite that flame so brightly. Set yourself free from all of the entanglements, arguments and discussions that other people have of how they feel you should be. You're not meant to be who they want you to be. You are meant to be you, unique, powerful, purposeful, precious. That's my gift for you today. Believe it, feel it, see it.